So good morning, friends. Uh, so in day three, session two, uh, we have Dr. Arjun Sel with us. Sir is a assistant professor in civil engineering department of NIT Silchar. Uh, sir served as engineering officers in civil in government of Tripura for five years. Sir has also served as the subject matter expert uh, in SME civil engineering for competitive exams recruitment with the professional bo bodies, that is the Metritech Private Limited India. Sir has uh, received his PhD degree in civil engineering from uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore in 2014. And sir's uh, research interest uh, includes earthquake engineering, including structural, geotechnical, seismology, uh, microzonation of urban centers, multi criteria decisions, uncertainty modeling, performance based design, risk, and reliability of structures. Uh, Sarah has already guided 32 PG students and nine PhD students. Uh, Sarah has published many research papers in reputed national as well as international journal and conferences. Uh, so with this, uh, the short CV, I uh, will request Sir to give his uh, today's talk uh, with all of us. So, sir, I hand over the session to you, sir. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, very good morning uh, to uh, all of you. Uh, Andy, uh, like, um, Andy, I'm, uh, I hope that everybody is safe and fine in your home uh, during this uh, pandemic uh, situation. So uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, the um, organizer, uh, Professor uh, Tarok uh, Bora sir, uh, and uh, other uh, associated faculty members uh, of this uh, Marwari University. Uh, so uh, my title of this presentation uh, is mainly focusing on the seismic risk uh, evaluation uh, with local site effects for arcuation design. So I will especially covered in this topic uh, related to the risk, that is seismic risk uh, and uh, how uh, this risk uh, actually is being quantified along with the local site effects, along with the like um, the vulnerability and the exposure uh, and what are the uh, important parameters involved in it. So uh, yes sir, next slide sir. Yeah, so yeah. So in this presentation, uh, say already uh, we know that Earth uh, like um, is a just like uh, is a planet where uh, we are uh, actually human beings are actually living uh, on the Earth surface. Uh, so uh, except the Earth, we even uh, not able to find any similar kind of uh, planets uh, like uh, which is livable and. Uh, when uh, people have like uh, started their civilization. Uh, so from that, uh, like or onwards, people started acquiring the knowledge uh, actually about the uh, various uh, like uh, physical phenomena, uh, like uh, one of them is like earthquake, uh, they experienced in time to time. So, and people has evolved uh, like uh, an habituate uh, along with their uh, like life uh, lifelong journey and uh, and now as of now we see that uh, this is uh, uh, like just like uh, earthquake which is actually and there are several uh, like uh, opinions uh, like which is maybe scientific fully scientific semi scientific even uh, so uh, like we can call it as a super stations uh, like uh, like uh, what is earthquake so you may uh, know also so, so many stories are there but as of now, in modern uh, science and technology, we came out with the observation, uh, with the uh, justification that uh, earthquake is actually a natural process, and this happens due to the uh, actually the tectonic uh, actually movement on the uh, uh, like uh, earth surface, and this earth surface actually is actually shaking uh, due to uh, the like uh, your some 
uh, explore, exploration is uh, like uh, the, what uh, it is called is like seismic uh, like um, convection current like uh, earth is i will show in the uh, subsequent uh, upcoming slide like earth is consist of mainly three layers so in three layers you will see at the top surface of the earth uh, that is actually highly uh, like solid in nature and this is actually uh, like uh, mainly uh, that convey due to the convection current uh, which is uh, coming upward and generating a, uh, like a uplift kind of thrust uh, due to the uh, at the um, bottom of the earth surface uh, so that is actually generating the earth uh, the seismic vibration and the earth crust is actually uh, like uh, like uh, uh, generating a, a energy uh, which is actually responsible uh, for uh, the earthquake so we will i will discuss in detail uh, in this uh, earthquake like there is a seismology and this uh, this uh, hazard seismic uh, that is a hazard in, in generally if we see this hazard is actually basically uh, if you see these are actually man made and uh, and, and and like natural process so natural hazards if you see these are uh, coming under say earthquake flood wind drought uh, cyclone tornado aggressive environmental hazards space hazards and radiation hazards and man made hazards are actually the nuclear blast mining uh, or quarry blast collision that is a traffic hazard related like traffic accident so these are actually uh, affecting now question is actually why earthquake is given more emphasis uh, rather than other hazards like earthquake actually uh, is actually generating a shear stresses actually if we see of course there, this is a vibrational uh, force or thrust which is generating but uh, it is finally affect, uh, generating a shear, shear stresses and we know that structure is highly vulnerable due to shear stresses uh, that is a, a expo, uh, ex, ex, external load that is being experienced now if we see in terms of indian context like uh, what earthquake uh, like is actually uh, generating uh, and creating the destruction so it is around say 60% of the hazard is highly uh, affecting the whole uh, country that is according to the indian scenario and 15% is say, say, like a landslide is uh, responsible for uh, uh, like disaster or uh, generating a hazard flood is around 12% uh, cyclone is 8% and drought is around 6.8% so if you see that approximately 60% of the overall hazards which are experienced by the indian continents are actually highly uh, like vulnerable for earthquake and as i already mentioned that this uh, may, among all these hazards uh, earthquake is considered as one of the most vulnerable, like a highly destructive hazards because of uh, its uh, because it is generating a shear stresses and structures are mainly uh, like uh, weaken uh, you can weaken the structure uh, if uh, like by if there is no shear strength or if, if it is a fluctuation there is a fluctuating kind of shear strength so that's why you see uh, destruction happens uh, in widespread in every year due to the earthquake only rather than others now i coming to this uh, slide uh, the this is like now as uh, it is a natural process so we cannot uh, prevent this process uh, earthquake uh, like ha from happening so now earthquake uh, that is actually just like if you think of that uh, structure is actually just like a cantilever which is uh, at the top of the surface and these are uh, acting as a base shear at the um, at the base of the structure like in this figure uh, say in force in the respective stories and it is uh, and these are actually vulnerable for this lateral thrust and uh, we know that earthquake is generating only the lateral thrust so it is although the structure may be vertically may be stable or say, safety and stability can be ensured but uh, due to this earthquake it is generating an additional uh, force that is like this f1 uh, f1 to f10 uh, uh, in the respective story so structure becomes uh, like unstable and, uh, and 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 destruction happens now if uh, if we see that uh, what are the uh, like and uh, mitigation uh, and we know that mitigation is only the process for uh, uh, to cope up with this kind of disaster so now civil engineers uh, yeah, civil engineers actually 
are now actually involved, especially structural engineer. Uh, uh, so they are actually dealing with the earth resistant design, the, uh, and, and design, and this earth resistant design actually consisting of like your uh, IO, IO, LS, and CP uh, based in de based design because we know that uh, IO means immediate occupancy, uh, LS means life safety, and CP means collapse prevention. So among uh, these, these are the design uh, level or the design criteria you have to follow as per the international code like your ATC and FEMA 356. So uh, you will see the detail and all. So immediate occupancy means structure will not say around say 90. 98% uh, uh, structure will be fully functional. Only one or two percent hardly will be uh, maybe damaged because of the high magnitude earthquake that is called maximum considered earthquake or design basis earthquake also, which is for uh, using for design purpose. I will discuss uh, subsequently. So this structure after the big uh, be any any uh, shaking, your structure will be uh, functional. Life safety is like for uh, structure is having a, a, a structural member and non-structural components. So only non-structural components are allowed in this design process, and structural components uh, components are completely functional. Uh, so uh, and a collapse prevention on your structure will be like before failing completely. It will give some time to escape or give some warning. It is a, actually and most of the designs, economical designs, that is activation design is mainly uh, considered CP CP like, uh, like kind of design. And uh, the, and and the, so this is economical design. So uh, and we are following uh, and designing the structure. Now, what are the problem we are facing actually? If you see structures, uh, it is this is our actually the one of the study uh, which I'm showing. Actually, uh, we we have studied like what are the components are highly vulnerable uh, uh, like the earthquake and which are highly contributing as an influential parameter it is it is observed that the column is the topmost uh, say, say, say story height is actually highly influential uh, and uh, and how to minimize the drift actually that was the objective in the study so it is a story column uh, column beam uh, and story height and total weight uh, we have considered as a parameter or variable and it is uh, first uh, influential parameter is story height and second is your column, uh, say column, uh, column that is a L by B ratio means it is a length, if it is a rectangle, so it will be L by B ratio will be say one, one and above ratio. And if it is a say circular, so it will be one only. So like that, it is, we have taken the non-dimensional quantity and beam is also being considered as a third uh, category. Uh, so, so from that, it is uh, actually, we have uh, tried to establish uh, which parameter can be used to control the reflection. A lateral deflection especially and along with the various and also it depends on the material properties like uh, uh, m20 and m25 so if we start we have studied in this so it is also showing that material how material strength is also contributing so it is just a briefing just uh, i have shown over here but detail you will find in this paper which i have noted at the top of this uh, actually information so uh, you, so this actually uh, similarly even planar geometry if you select so it, uh, in the in the previous slides, I have shown some of the various height, uh, like uh, along the height, how this uh, like a tall structures, mid-rise structures, uh, ground story structures, which are say acceleration sensitive, ground story structure is high acceleration sensitive, mid-rise structure is velocity sensitive, and your uh, tall structures are displacement sensitive. So for above all, we have studied and found that along with the aspect ratio like the, the uh, uh, like a uh, plan aspect ratio so we have studied and it is found that squares kind of plan uh, is highly safer uh, actually uh, so uh, and uh, and uh, so that we have observed based in our study similarly and this study is uh, the continuation of this uh, like how column is uh, how much is contributing uh, like uh, percentage wise uh, with respect to the beam and story height so story height is around 12.5 percent actually is being contribute as a contributor uh, second one is a your uh, beam uh, and then column uh, ratio uh, that is uh, 1.1 percent so this is just like a, a normalized ratio uh, that we have considered here uh, to present in this uh, work so, so in the next uh, i think uh, sir please uh, move ahead uh, next next slide sir please 
yeah so now uh, so this is a uh, now vulnerability so say suppose vulnerability if we talk about uh, these are the things we have to consider like uh, what are the what, what is the proneness of the building fragility analysis uh, in like uh, and this is actually fragility analysis or vulnerability studies being done through uh, say fragility studies so this is being initiated with the nuclear power plant uh, candy and uh, ravindra uh, 1984 and from that onwards now we are using uh, like uh, this this kind of study which is highly seismically active region like our northeast uh, your uh, bhuj uh, that is gujarat uh, that uh, area kutch area so you will see that uh, these are actually highly vulnerable seismically active region so we have to give more attention uh, to assess the vulnerability and vulnerability studies actually depends on the various aspects like uh, like uh, like uh, say Uh, fragility like it gives you the probability of losses or the failure of the structure so based on that we can assess uh, the structural like uh, how much strength uh, that structure is having and this is through uh, done uh, fragility analysis and this is called fragility curve uh, so uh, that fragility curve will give you the vulnerability status of the condition uh, with the condition that is called conditional probability so that we need to uh, follow so uh, i think uh, sir please next slide yeah so this is actually the uh, like your functions uh, which we are using for fragility as a fragility function which will describe the accidents uh, for a particular threshold or the limit limit limiting values like uh, so say suppose zone 5 is 0.36 g so that is the capacity uh, of the structure which is if if a uh, like a or quick uh, force which is being generated on a particular site is exceeding beyond this uh, say 0.36 g or 0.24 g suppose uh, which is a limit state value so that gives you the like uh, vulnerability or the fragility uh, or probability of accidents uh, so that is being uh, actually being accounted and we uh, designed the uh, structure accordingly so that it should not uh, reach beyond the Uh, like uh, this uh, fragile limits or the uh, beyond the structural uh, capacity of that uh, for which it has been designed for 50 uh, like uh, so as normally non normally structures are being designed for 50 years uh, ordinary structures and for important structure it may go up to 100 years 500 years uh, for nuclear power plants even to 1000 years also so that depends on the designing uh, design parameter so this is being done to say uh, this uh, hazard and the uh, vulnerability studies so uh, so and so similarly uh, if we go through uh, sir next slide yeah yeah so these are the fragility studies actually this is a typical study which we have conducted also so we, uh, and also some of the parameters if you see that uh, some using say most of the studies what we have observed is uh, say fragility function uh, function is with with a say displacement or say acceleration so in that case it does not reflect the actually the integrity of the structure which is even uh, contributing uh, like in combined manner so uh, in this study we have considered and found uh, considered combined as well as using single parameter uh, and it is found that uh like how the combined parameter is actually uh, estimating uh, the probability of accident as well as uh, along with the uh, single parameter so this is for say uh, bay ratio of course it is a plan aspect ratio that is a say 0.25 0.5 0.75 0.5, 0.5, means square so it is found that uh, one is actually giving the better actually scenario like a safer design uh, in in terms of uh, fragility assessment and also the combined parameter is also actually contributing better uh, like a, a, like like how the other um, like components like uh, in in a structural uh, members or components are contributing each other to represent the actual scenario of the structures uh, rather than using single uh, parameter so this is only the fragility uh, like uh, study for the structure so uh, next slide sir yeah so now uh, the next uh, like this uh, if we see this uh, the whole uh, our I indian uh, seismic hazard map uh, which is given by indian standard uh, so if we see these are being divided into a, say four zones uh, already uh, like uh, zone 5 is 0.36 g uh, and uh, zone 3 is 0.24 and 3 is 0.16 and 2 is 0.25 
0.1 g so these are actually designed uh, like mapped specially mapped uh, considering the earthquake scenario of uh, based on the monitoring data uh, like monitoring uh, like data which has data means earthquake event that has occurred in especially in various geographical regions especially say northeast india and northern india and the western that is uh, gujarat uh, and so this part is actually highly vulnerable uh, and they have classified and other say south and peninsula uh, and the central part of the india so these are actually uh, they have uh, mapped this in a wider scale uh, so which is actually uh, representing the uh, scenario of the uh, like uh, how the uh, like how motion is actually uh, especially distributed uh, but there is a limitation for this so we actually we are going for uh, micro donation study already we are uh, like uh, doing now for various cities uh, and uh, like 100 uh, smart cities uh, concept uh, which we are actually uh, now planning and constructing various uh, states uh, of the upper country so we are actually um, now uh, this uh, like seismic monitoring and uh, and site specific study is given more importance uh, like to uh, come out with the reliable uh, assessment of the design parameters so that our structure can be uh, safe, uh, safe and uh, serviceable, uh, uh, like according to its design period. So uh, that is the main purpose. So and in, also we we see that every decades uh, our this kind of codes are being revising. That is uh, main reason is actually uh, like uh, after a, ha having a big earthquake uh, that has occurred in in a particular uh, uh, area where uh, the area is highly seismically active. So uh, your, uh, our tectonic setting uh, uh, is being changed. So in this case, uh, like um, we have to take care uh, that uh, take care for uh, after the big earthquake that tectonic setting has been changed. So whatever uh, special mapping has been done in the code, that value may not be satisfying. It may be underestimated or overestimated. So in that case, after having a big earthquake or even a, after a decade, we are actually revising the maps. That is the, actually the reason. Now, coming to the uh, design response spectrum, just a brief uh, introduction that uh, uh, like, uh, what is design response spectrum? We know that the, this is the spectrum, which is actually the response spectrum or a smooth spectrum, uh, like after uh, uh, achieving from the, uh, like a response spectrum, which is a smooth uh, design curve, uh, like what we will see now uh, for the uh, like uh, design purpose. Say for design purposes, as I said, for an ordinary structure, it is a 50 years. So we have to use this uh, design, uh, like design basis, uh, uh, like earthquake, uh, that design should be uh, carried out uh, for a, any structure. So we are using this uh, design response spectrum. Now construction is very, uh, we have to consider it along in the geotechnical aspects because this uh, earthquake is actually, it is, if you think of, so earthquake study or earthquake, being an earthquake engineer, you have to have a geology uh, knowledge, knowledge of the geology, your geotechnical knowledge should be, uh, you should have, your structural knowledge sh you should have. So. If you integrate all these, even mapping also, like your GIS and remote, uh, remote sensing, those uh, knowledge is also being uh, important over here. So this study helps to uh, actually uh, like uh, to uh, study comprehensively and come out with the reliable results. So uh, this is a multidisciplinary uh, uh, domain also uh, like the, uh, uh, you can consider. So this design response spectrum is consisting of all these domains of experts. And we are actually uh, now coming out with the final product that is a design response spectrum and uh, which is a function of natural period uh, along with the spectral acceleration. So once you know this uh, uh, period of the structure, now pe this period is a structural period. So if you come out with the uh, period of the structure, so automatically you will know how much expected that is a mean with a statistically uh, significance five percent significant level we are actually estimating this uh, design uh, spectrum uh, so uh, or 95 percent confidence level so this actually satisfying like uh, you spectral acceleration so once you know the spectral acceleration you can easily estimate other parameters based on you like for tall structure you can easily con transform or convert it into a velocity or displacement uh, uh, by using this uh, uh, like uh, uh, formula and all, so uh, so these uh, these are used for 
uh, like um, to estimate the how much force will be attracted by this structure. So that force is being used in the earth resistance design, and we are using it uh, for our design purposes. So, uh, so yeah. So next, uh, this is the earth internal structure. As I told in a very brief at the beginning, like how earth actually consisting of the three major layers or major shells. These are called crust, metal, and core. Now, crust is also divided into a two components, uh, like two components that is called upper and lower crust. And this crust may vary uh, place to place, like 40 to 60 kilometers somewhere. Somewhere it is a like below the ocean, it is a five to 10 kilometer ranges uh, that is uh, touching to the uh, that uh, upper uh, your upper uh, mantle. So and your crust is actually uh, is actually floating condition, and uh, you are actually we are actually uh, living on the earth uh, surface. And below it is around the 5,000 degrees centigrade above. Actually, this is complete continuously burning actually at the core. So uh, and core is also subdivided into uh, uh, like a outer core and inner core. So uh, so if you, if you think uh, that this is just like a like a miracle or uh, say wonder uh, uh, which is maintained by the nature uh, that uh, we are living on the earth surface in this uh, condition where at the bottom the earth is burning actually with a more than five degrees centigrade. So uh, so this is actually and here uh, these seismologists have studied uh, with this uh, like a num number of observed based on the number of observations and then found that that the, uh, during the earthquake these uh, for like a four, uh, like a four types of waves are being generated and one is a p wave and s wave these are called body waves and surface waves are r and uh, really and uh, love waves so mostly mostly these p and s waves are actually uh, like uh, like uh, propagation along the depth is like uh, in the from the crust uh, that is within the mantle it's a uh, seismic wave velocity increases uh, and certain cases it drops down uh, that is especially s waves and it is vanished when it is being going below the deeper like uh, in the inner mantle as uh, a uh, upper or lower mantle so in that case uh, only p wave is actually uh, actually pass, uh, being passed because of its uh, compression and dilatation nature and shear wave because we know that liquid does medium does not allow uh, your uh, like uh, like um, any waves like because it is connected to the shear uh, shear modulus so shear modulus is zero in the liquid medium so it is vanishes at this level so only p wave is allowed so this is just uh, uh, so and earthquake has been observed only in the crust layers especially in the upper crust so uh, and 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 it is uh, like um, and frequent earthquakes are occurring um, on the earth surface and so the and below the like mantle uh, onwards there is no earthquake uh, being detected so yeah so sir please next slide Yeah, so these are uh, some of the like uh, uh, like um, earthquake that has occurred uh, and uh, and uh, 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 collected uh, from the seismological observatory. And considering the Indian context, also if you see, this is uh, the whole global map and the, their tectonic uh, like uh, like plates boundaries uh, has been shown over here. And these are the earthquake randomly occurred along the periphery of the uh, like belt or the fracture. And these tectonic plates are nothing but the fracture of the earth crust where the energy is being released so this uh, through this this energy actually uh, is coming out in the, uh, uh, in the in the in the in the in the that uh, plate boundaries where stiffness is even very low so we can say in nutshell that where the plate boundaries is being observed these are the we like a very having a very low stiffness uh, areas or the junction where the plate has got fractured and uh, earth, frequent earthquakes are actually and plates are interacting there and energy is being released over uh, these uh, junctions uh, so uh, and uh, and these are uh, energy we know that earthquake uh, uh, occurring uh, or expl explosion is taking place at the uh, subsurface so this expression uh, this uh, this energy is not able to transform uh, like uh, in the same manner so it is transformed into a waveform. That is uh, what we discuss now is the body wave and surface wave. So it is uh, now reaching to the site, uh, various uh, sites, and these are affecting the our infrastructure. So uh, this is actually um, now you have to take care 
uh, for our structure because this is a natural process we know uh, and um, only mitigation in these steps. So we have to uh, take uh, take care uh, for this uh, for the, through our articulation design technique uh, and and the processes which we are following. So and these are the typical representation like uh, how these uh, like uh, events are being distributed, especially throughout the globe uh, in various uh, continents. So yes, sir. Next slide, sir. So now uh, this is actually the phys uh, physics of the uh, like structuring process of the plates uh, that is being shown and it is well known that it is called ERT theory, elastic rebound theory. If we see this is the Poisson's, uh, it is this kind of structuring process is followed by Poisson's distribution, which is uh, the formula, which is a, which gives you the number of earthquake uh, in a, on an year uh, and, and uh, how these are occurring actually. So here, uh, this, these are the three phases the structure is taking place, just like your uh, bending of plates, uh, like you. So uh, initially, uh, energy is being accumulated during the, as the plate is under motion in the junction, so uh, at the first phase, like if, 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 a, figure A. And figure B is now slowly, slowly, as if, uh, like, both plates are under motion in opposite or um, opposite direction, so, and it is slowly, slowly bending. And in the third stage, this is uh, got fracture uh, completely and being separated from each other. And this uh, this process uh, is exactly the if we want to model it. So this follows a Poisson's distribution. Like uh, so, it is gives you the number of events uh, that has occurred, uh, and it is generating a earthquake actually finally after immediately fracture. So now, uh, if we come out to the uh, in this process. So one is uh, the, the, uh, some of the uh, that is called uh, force shocks, after shocks, and main shocks. Like you cannot consider all these shocks as an uh, event. So some cases we what we do, why what we used to do is we are considering for our earthquake uh, being an earthquake engineer because seismologists are only uh, like identifying the fault and fracture and this uh, earthquake uh, this uh, uh, like uh, fault uh, identification of fault uh, they are doing actually. But now when it is coming to the infrastructure uh, safety uh, aspect. So civil engineers are actually now having uh, the like uh, interest uh, and the responsibility to how to design the structure. So in this aspect that is called engineering seismology also. Uh, so in this aspect, we are trying to quantify specially, uh, special tem on special temporal manner, uh, this earthquake hazard, how that uh, earthquake, the earthquake that has occurred in some somewhere uh, in a uh, specially, and how it is affecting to the neighboring uh, areas. Uh, like uh, so, it is found that around 300 kilometer distance, uh, uh, there uh, an earthquake can uh, actually affect the infrastructure. So uh, uh, normally, so in that case, uh, that is called. So uh, that is earthquake engineers are actually now uh, trying to find out uh, how to quantify it at the site. Uh, when uh, an earthquake that has occurred at the source. Uh, so uh, that is actually through attenuation process. Uh, so I will discuss like uh, now here already I have discussed that this is the main shocks like uh, using the Poisson distribution model I have shown in a various cycle. So what is happening here main shock before it is happening uh, like these are called four shocks like like if you see main shock is at the peak. Uh, these are the peak shocks. Uh, these are cycle of energy for a, a for fracturing the plate. So one cycle, once it is completely over, there is called uh, four shocks. Uh, then after the main shock, that the, the remaining event that has occurred, it can be happening as weeks, months, uh, even for two months, three months also, after shocks can happen until and unless the crust be completely fractures. So this actually gives a actually uh, like uh, the uh, like again the each and uh, got separated plate can be acting as an individual plate and again it is building the uh, following this same process and uh, gen uh, releasing that kind or generating this kind of earthquake so this is the uh, and this uh, that's why this uh, whole process is being modeled using Poisson's, Poisson's model or Poisson's distribution so these are also some some of the typical uh, like earthquake that has occurred in a say hours basis that is for understanding point of the seismicity uh, so that is being shown over here, yeah, like hours and weeks. Uh, so yes, sir. Please next slide. Okay, so it is also same. Uh, yeah, uh, it is a just uh, yeah. So.
so now if we see uh, that is for say northeast india as we know northeast india is highly seismically active region so in the world it is, it is the sixth most actually sixth position seismically so if we see there are various um, great earthquakes even occurred uh, in this belt uh, so and there are there were uh, various destruction uh, actually in this uh, areas and um, if we see why this area is highly seismically active uh, because if you see uh, in the northern part of the uh, our northeast area uh, along the himalayas this is under uh, say continent to continent collision if we see or observe in the eastern eastern side you will see that this is under uh, actually under subduction as uh, process uh, there is between the burmese plate uh, and the indian plate so uh, and in, in inside this continuous actually uh, that uh, earthquake is uh, actually uh, that is called interplate earthquakes uh, are occurring uh, so uh, because of this uh, actually um, like uh, differential settlement uh, um, and the differential movements uh, as well as settlements are occurring in the various junctions of the plate in, uh, whether it is within the plates or the junction so and make this area highly seismically active so uh, so the, uh, and now uh, now uh, like if we uh, characterize systematically uh, how how this process need to be done like uh, your uh, say risk assessment point of view like uh, vulnerability the health seismic hazard and your exposure uh, exposure time of course i have not discussed about the exposure i let i will discuss so now let us see this seismic hazard first what you have to do you have to collect the before seismic hazard assessment like uh, you have to collect the geological data and seismological uh, data means events remote sensing like mapping uh, like a geographical map um, uh, boundary uh, also you have to collect and uh, say, and the retination model uh, and the uh, mainly the earthquake event you have to collect uh, for your study area then uh, you can do the seismic hazard study uh, using say, there are standard methods or approaches that is called deterministic seismic hazard analysis and the probabilistic seismic hazard analysis so both methods we are using uh, but there is some uh, advantage as well as disadvantage also so uh, dsha or de deterministic seismic hazard does not talk about the uncertainties uh, so but uh, your uh, probabilistic seismic hazard uh, talk about the uncertainties uh, and along with this uh, like uh, temporal uh, temporal mapping so and probabilistic hazard um, uh, hazard actually uh, that technique is being widely used for assessing the seismic hazard so and these are the outputs you can expect from the seismic hazard these are like say maximum credible earthquake that is a maximum earthquake that has occurred in particular in a particular fault and controlling source means which is I mean, there may be number of faults but which fault is highly responsible for uh, generating seismic hazard that need to be identified that is called controlling source and seismicity parameters uh, also you have to estimate uh, for your study area uh, after collecting the data uh, 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 that has occurred along the faults uh, like for 40 50 years 100 years whatever data are available uh, in terms of event then now your next is hazard curve that is the main uh, input uh, or oh, sorry output uh, for your seismic hazard assessment and then uniform hazard response spectrum already uh, we have seen in the design response spectrum so that is the uniform hazard response hazard response spectrum you can generate along with pg and spectral acceleration and special mapping can be done for uh, in a temporal uh, special temporal manner that is for say 2% probability uh, for, uh, for 50 years and 10% probability of accidents for say 100 years or 50 years and after 500 years so you can do it uh, based on your uh, study of interest and then next is this is this part seismic hazard that is we have divided actually uh, the three components like your earthquake when it has occurred uh, it is uh, only the seismic hazard is being assessed on the rock surface considering your uh, say a site or b site b site class according to the nhrp classification so there is no amplification or deamplification that is a soil site effects is being not considered so in earthquake process uh, we are dividing into a very broad subcategory these are called source effect path effect and site effect so here source effect is your fault uh, you have to uh, you have to see how where that earthquake is occurring that identification of all that you have to do it and then next is your uh, say uh, uh, say uh, path effects source path effect so path effect is being mapped or quantified 
using your GMPs like ground motion prediction equation or attenuation equation, uh, which is a function of magnitude and distance, uh, RP magnitude and the distance where from source to site. So that helps to estimate the uh, or map the uh, these ground motion hazards uh, that is that is that is considered in the path effects and site effects is equally. Uh, your uh, like geotechnical subsurface soil, soft soil that that may amplify or deamplify your uh, seismic hazard, which you have estimated using DSHA or PSHA. So that in that case, you have to do these geotechnical studies using uh, geotechnical uh, standard procedure. So now, like you, uh, we are using SPT test, SPT borehole test in a subsurface uh, bore, bore, borehole test, and geophysical test also we do for estimating the subsurface shear velocity profiles. So you are getting using this geophysical study or geophysical assessment for estimating the site effect or site characterization, uh, like uh, rock depth, you can map subsurface modeling along the cross, like a sub cross sectional uh, in a subsurface manner, you can estimate in which depth, what type of material is actually located. And, and from that, we can estimate also the correlation indirectly to estimate some of the unknown parameters that is, you can do and subsurface BS uh, share of velocity mapping. And then is your, uh, this is also site response study. That is a site class, uh, class, uh, classification you can do that is called A, B, C, D as per any CRP classification, you can do it uh, based on the share of velocity and any uh, and SPT uh, uh, value. And site response studies actually gives you like at the surface hazard. Now, uh, after uh, estimating the amplification or deamplification of the site effects, so you can uh, have a surface, uh, sorry, rock level hazard that is using your DSHN cases. So whatever you estimated, the amplification or deamplification, say 1.2, which is being amplified value you found for your, uh, say, study location. So if you have a surface hazard, say 0.36 G, so you have to multiply uh, 0.36 G into, uh, say, say 1.5. So that is the amplification for your uh, study area. So that gives you the surface hazard. So this kind of study you can do by site response study or ground that is called ground response study. Uh, so so that is that gives you what are the output amplification uh, amplification surface level PGAS that is a spectral acceleration period mapping uh, site that is called site period mapping you can do it that is uh, and site coefficients also you can do it in terms of uh, P, which is a period dependent coefficient and design response spectra you can do it. Uh, so, and then liquefaction study also, we can do it uh, thereafter if the, this, uh, the, your study area is also being uh, also uh, affected by liquefaction uh, or the, uh, the, the topography of the area is close to the groundwater surface. You, uh, so in this case, liquefaction study uh, is also important. So, and then finally you have to integrate it in a, in a, in a, in a platform that is, a, that is called a hazard, inti hazard integration. Uh, process so that, that gives you the actually the microzonation studies and uh, that is called site specific study as well as uh, the recessor analysis uh, can be done uh, after uh, assessing this all kinds of uh, expected hazard for a particular locations so this is a brief uh, the brief flow chart uh, how you will perform this study so now this is a typical study uh, you will see uh, that is which is a seismicity in the study region that is for northeast india we have conducted this study that is for seismic hazard study uh, that is using PSHA and DSHA uh, for uh, for the Assam state uh, for all the district uh, district uh, headquarters. So this study is being published also in the Journal of Earthquake Engineering. You can go through in detail, but this is the uh, very brief summary uh, that uh, this is the study area for the whole state uh, showing the district. So uh, and we have collected the faults uh, like there are very important active faults are located in this study region. And uh, after collecting these faults, uh, so we have uh, also collected the earthquake events, uh, so uh, and, uh, which has occurred uh, like last say 100 years. Uh, so and th these are actually uh, now uh, you have a fault in data as well as the event data. So and event data you cannot use directly without uh, like uh, without say processing. So pre-processing should be done. That is called declustering process. So, and then you, you can estimate uh, after extracting the say, main shocks. Uh, so you can uh, accumulate the data for your study area and uh, come out with the 
uh, like seismicity parameters. So these are some of the steps. What I'm now discussing is actually shown in a, a pictorial form. Like site is located, source is located. There is a linear source. So uh, aerial source is also you can consider. But uh, linear source is actually is much more reliable because you are directly connecting to the uh, real faults or the fracture uh, uh, with respect to your site. Once you identified the step one, now if you in step two, you have to do the um, uh, like uh, quantification of the hazard at the source, like at, at your site. This is the source, this is the source. This is the aerial source, this is the line source. So at the site of interest, whichever is affecting or giving the high hazard, this higher value or greater value, that should be considered as a your seismic hazard for your site. So uh, there, so in, in the third step, now how to bring the, bring it into quantification, that is a called attenuation model, as already I have discussed, uh, which is a distance and magnitude dependent uh, and gives you the ground motion parameter. So, uh, so uh, and the, from that you can estimate the seismic hazard. And finally, in step four, uh, this is like you, you are quantifying the values, uh, especially uh, on a special temporal manner. So this is for actually, um, like for, the, of course, it is a DSHA, but at the second case, it is showing as a PSHA form. Like you require uncertainty, it is a probabilistic normal pro probability distribution is being used for uh, assess, ass, assessing the uh, or quantification of the seismic hazard. So, uh, and uh, finally, output is coming out in terms of uh, probability of accidents or mean error rate, mean error rate of accidents uh, for a particular uh, given value of hazard. So that gives you the seismic hazard curve for that area. So this will give you the uh, a reliable uh, seismic hazard that is, that is going to hit in your area. So this is a briefing of this. Now, uh, what are the basic steps actually? So what just now I explained, these are actually shown over here, uh, like uh, from understanding identification of seismic sources in the study area, uh, and then collect the earthquake event database in the past, mapping of active faults and assessing recurrence pattern, and, and estimate maximum considered earthquake uh, or controlling, uh, controlling source or controlling uh, magnitude. So selection of ground motion also important because you cannot uh, blindly take any of the ground motion uh, like uh, equation, which is uh, worldwide actually, being given for various specific regions like California, which is being proposed by California GMP, you cannot use or utilize in, in our country uh, when you are doing for seismic other study, but you can use it. Uh, but you have to find out uh, like um, who, where, uh, based on your validation with the real data, whether uh, whether it is a tectonic, tectonic it is a similar tectonic domain characteristics uh, are having or not, even uh, so based on, the, based on the past history of these faults and all. So if it is matching similarly, uh, so you can use it, but a uh, uh, su suggestion would be to utilize your uh, uh, like site specific equation for reliable estimation of hazard. So, uh, and then seismic hazard curve you can achieve and then response spectra and all you can uh, generate. So these are some of the, just uh, what study you have conducted. And these are some of the, uh, like your, uh, like that is called declustering process. Uh, that we have followed for our uh, this uh, this study for us uh, northeast Assam state. So this data uh, detail typically has been shown, uh, and they, for their data declustering process, uh, which is a time and space window we are actually assessing. So, uh, sir, please next. Yeah. So this is actually uh, the like the study area showing the geographical boundary, uh, and they are uh, some of them um, dividing various uh, like a Mismi region. Uh, Eastern Himalayan region, Shillong Plateau region, and Indo Burmese region. These are the major seismic zones we have actually uh, been uh, actually characterized based on our study. Because then only these, the, all these major seismic zones you you can uh, consider. Uh, because in this zone, suppose Indo Burmese zone, number of events that has occurred. This is this this will give you the like a subduction characteristic. So all the data or earthquake event that has occurred in this periphery you have to characterize or uh, like you have to separate make it separate from the Shillong plateau region so that this whatever events has occurred that can capture the realistic behavior uh, of, of this region so that will give you the realistic assessment similarly here if you see that active faults seismotectonic map of the region so you can see there are uh, like and i think 19 faults are located uh, and among them these are say 
whether which one is active all are active faults which have uh, we have considered over here in this study and inactive faults are also there so but we have uh, not considered for the seismic hazard assessment uh, so uh, and these are used for uh, seismic hazard mapping and this is the seismotectonic map uh, where the faults are also being shown over here great art to in, including great great art twist as well as uh, the uh, events events that i have been superimposed in the same map so this is called seismotectonic map of this region so uh, so this is uh, yeah so now these are the maxima so now maximum magnitude of earthquake how you will estimate actually these are some of the steps you need to follow for a particular fault that you suppose we have a say 19 faults active faults so now for each fault we have estimated the maximum magnitude based on this all these proposed methods so which are well established and we have used to estimate this maximum magnitude uh, and uh, for each fault and those magnitudes are being used for seismic as a studies of this region so uh, so yeah sir please next yeah so these are actually the maximum magnitude uh, we have estimated uh, showing the details of the fault uh, like 19 fault uh, say uh, latitude longitude uh, they are uh, in like a, a for a, a for a, a oldham fault so it's uh, like a largest and nearest uh, false location uh, in terms of latitude is being shown maximum magnitude that is the observed maximum magnitude that has occurred in this fault and then these are the methods using uh, kichko and gupta uh, so these are actually uh, used and finally the maximum magnitude has been estimated and uh, that has been used for seismic hazard assessment so please next so these are actually the now the ground motion prediction equation that we have used uh, like which is a function of magnitude distance and these uh, uh, site uh, site effects uh, or say uh, the, which we have not not considered but only magnitude and distance only we are considering uh, in, in, as a path effects and so in site effects we have considered it separately through ground motion studies so here these are the typical equation like uh, for estimating the Mm, like uh, this, uh, like uh, expected, uh, like uh, your uh, PGA. Uh, so that have been used, and we have validated uh, other uh, those who have proposed this equation uh, in a in a, in this manner. Like uh, these are these are called multiple regression uh, techniques. Uh, so these equations have been used, uh, and we have validated with the observed data, uh, considering the site class A, B, C, uh, based on the data available in the various online seismological agencies and we have seen how whether these data are how data are distributed uh, along the uh, like uh, say in terms of this sample central distance and along the magnitude wise so you uh, so this is to understand this and now uh, the uh, and now we have done it using the attenuation equation uh, which equation should give the reliable results uh, like more than even say it is around 1000 uh, kilometer uh, distance because in NDMA guideline, if you see, although it is being uh, well documented and saying that up to 300 kilometer earthquake has a effect, uh, a significant effect, and beyond 30, 300 kilometer, uh, there is no uh, such kind of significant effect. But it is specially uh, noted and mentioned, mentioned in the NDMA guideline also that those area which are highly seismically active, like zone 5, in that study area if you want to study site site specifically so you have to consider like a seismic if you want to do the seismic hazard study uh, so you have to consider up to 500 kilometers so considering as northeast india is under highly seismically active belt so we have considered uh, trying to modify those equation using the observed data that has been found in the northeast uh, for various earthquake in a decade number of decades so we have come out with the best equation and for prediction uh, of this uh, seismic hazard or for mapping of the seismic hazard. So these are some of the, these, these are the models that we have used for validating and observing using this uh, say a spectral acceleration versus uh, time period. Similarly here, epicentral distance versus PGA. And finally here, some of the well-known equation that has been proposed by various uh, researchers. Uh, and we have uh, shown our, uh, like you would present equation model to presentation models so like that we have shown and finally we have chosen or expected our reliable equation which can easily reliably map the uh, seismic hazard of our study area and then we have map uh, the uh, map uh, map the seismic hazard and come out with this kind of output 
for this is called uh, design like a response spectral as a design a response spectrum and as well as the design response spectrum for various districts actually these are various districts uh, so uh, we have shown over here uniform that is called uniform hazard response spectrum for two percent probability in 50 years uh, and and the comparison yes sir please next Yeah, so these are actually again shown in a tabular form for all the districts located in the Assam state uh, Assam headquarters. So we have uh, mapped and quantified uh, for all the districts uh, that is based on the DSHA as well as the PSHA uh, for 2% and for 10% and for 50 years, 100 years, uh, and so on and so on. So these are actually the uh, PGA values. Uh, so we have done. So this is a special mapping. Uh, for the study area in a district headquarters, what we have estimated shown in a map map, map form. Uh, so, so this is the seismic hazard curve already uh, for all the three thirty-three like district thirty-three district we have estimated, and this is a typical representation for Silchar and Guwahati how the seismic hazard curve uh, have been developed. So these details are available in that article. You can go through also. So yeah, so this is a, um, and then this is a also similar kind of study. Earlier we have conducted for these two states say in the Northeast that is called Tripura and Mizoram in a combined manner. And we come out with this uh, like PSH uh, or PGA, uh, that is a peak horizontal acceleration or peak ground acceleration for uh, various return periods for 10% and 2% probability of accident. And it is showing the North, uh, north part of the Tripura uh, is showing the high hazard and whereas in the south part is showing the lowest hazard now and these are this uh, like a uniform hazard spectra uh, for uh, the say this is for uh, agartala uh, city uh, and Aizal city both uh, have been presented over here for two percent and ten percent probability of accidents uh, so this is also published in natural hazards uh, in 2013 so you can go through uh, for details plus uh, sir please next yeah so this is summary uh, that these are the active faults which are actually contribute or controlling sources also uh, you can we can talk about this is for sagging fault low heat fault and old arm fault has a greater potential to have magnitude more than eight so based on the present study and pga values are uh, what are the minimum maximum ranges for two percent probability of accidents and dsha uh, methods so it is a point the pga is also optimal based on the present study uh, so this is the report so now as we have discussed like uh, that you grow, like how the seismic energy has been actually propagated uh, that is through web uh, transformation or web uh, mechanics also we can talk about like uh, web propagation proce process so these are the characterized into source effect uh, and path effect and site effects so uh, already we have discussed source effect is actually based on this fault consideration like that gives you the identification of faults and for the fault for what type of fault it is and how this uh, like fault is whether it is a, a strike slip fault whether it is a deep slip fault uh, so also or transform fault so like that you can easily if it is a fault if it is a plate boundary it may be con like a uh, like a uh, is a subduction boundaries it may be plate boundaries so like so these kind of uh, things uh, actually uh, seismologists are actually studying uh, based on their uh, uh, based on their expertise and come out with the proper identification and mapping like uh, finally, it is they are publishing uh, like G GSI, Geological Survey of India is the authority to publish such kind of uh, maps uh, for, for the faults, which is even some faults may be hidden. So all these source, path and side effects we have to consider for proper quantification of the seismic hazard. Now, uh, importance of uh, local site condition. So this uh, already we know what are the condition uh, like uh, why it is important because it is amplifying and the ground motion or de-amplifying also so so these side effects we have to consider uh, for uh, for assessing the surface hazard surface level hazard because our all the infrastructure or structure is located or uh, being embedded on the ground like a surface. and these are getting going to going to be affected if such kind of earthquake is going to hit in this area and associated secondary seismic hazards like liquefaction and other uh, can be also again going to be hit in this area so in this study we are mainly uh, concentrating on the calculate calculation of uh, natural period amplification of ground motions evaluation of response spectrum for structural design 
and uh, so these are the study uh, and we are interested to find out for our safety aspects of the infrastructure so next so and now uh, as we are talking about the site effects so before you do this site effects like uh, site classification is very important over here and this is being done through like your site classes on bedrock and site classes for soil so now for site classes for bedrock before say you do so what we do actually uh, th these are the classification actually in our in our the study actually we have shown typically that this study uh, this value have been reported by mr at 2015 that is for rock layers uh, for the risk for say uh, rock layer that is like uh, depth is around 100 meter below uh, or within 100 meter that is 1.25 vs that is a shear velocity we know that it is generating a shear stresses so that's this is just mostly responsible for destruction so like you see here it is 1.25 for northeast and 200 even if you go into deeper uh, depth so it is two and it is a higher and higher up to 400 3.75 kilometer per second so this as and another important thing is in site class classification for soil for estimating the site effects and these are the classification a b c d even e is also there uh, which is highly susceptible for liquefaction value and, uh, and it is being done by what if it is value is for site class d is which is uh, like varies above 180 but less than 360 it is share velocity so it is considered as site class d similarly for site class c it is three, uh, like varies between 760 and 360 and for v it is i uh, say 1500 uh, and 760 within this it is lying uh, site class b and above 1500 that is site class a so uh, these are actually used, uh, th this classification is being proposed by NHERP and we are using for site classification and mapping. And this is some of the study physically, as I said in the flowchart also, like these are the, some of these spe site specific study we have conducted for both these, uh, like uh, Agartala, at uh, Ristipura and Mizoram uh, in the cities actually. So you have to consider these geophysical techniques also, because we cannot, this is called also non-destructive non techniques. Uh, because uh, you are not disturbing the actual soil layer, but you are you will be able to obtain using geophysical techniques like the subsurface profiling, like like this. How you are and this is the procedure shown over here as like setup, complete setup, and recording is being done. And finally, you are obtaining the shear velocity profile along the velocity shear velocity versus depth. So uh, so this this is a very powerful and very efficient techniques. You can capture or uh, take uh, this kind of survey in a wider area. So this is used, widely used for and popularly used for uh, microzonation studies. So this study we have used in this area and uh, and, and and to study the uh, what are the uh, techniques that is being used. So these are some of the sites that uh, we have typically uh, conducted the uh, study uh, took this kind of experiments in Agartala as well as Idol cities in 2012. Uh, sorry, not 11. Yeah, so these are the mapping we have done for say typically shown over for specially for uh, Agartala. Uh, say for this is coming uh, SP, SPT and value based mapping uh, and as well as uh, your uh, like your share velocity profile mapping. So, of course, there is some miss, uh, say some, uh, some uh, say differences uh, because uh, we know that both the techniques are actually one is a destructive technique, another is a non destructive technique. So because of this, uh, its strain level is varying. So because of that, some slight differences there, but most of the areas are similarly like uh, matching, uh, and uh, and this gives you the uh, clear picture of the actual uh, like uh, so, uh, subsurface properties or the actual insides of the uh, so, uh, soil, special uh, specially varying, uh, and uh, and we can do it use it for microzonation study for this area for safety of the structures. And now these are the like like if you want to do study for a say for a bridge site or for an important building or monumental building so or even any any important uh, say uh, structure so uh, nuclear power plant suppose so this kind of site specific study for this kind of site specific study you have to follow what are the input parameter needed and uh, like one is shake 2000 is one of the very popular uh, software uh, or the tool that you can use and deep soil is also used and era is also being used uh, as a ground response studies and these are the inputs you need to have to know before to do the study that is a shear velocity uh, you have to obtain using the msw or spt whatever uh, value and soil thickness layer wise you have to know 
damping ratio of that particular soil for various types of soil refined sand seal clay rock uh, so these kind of you have to find out the shear modulus and damping ratio uh, experimentally in the laboratory and uh, generate this car damping ratio and shear modulus car and that is being used for site response studies a density of soil and rock also you have to know and ground motion time history that should be site specific you cannot use any ground motion for some other region like you bhuj area uh, say whatever ground motion has uh, has been recorded are uh, till now so you cannot use the directly for our northeast even northeast data you we cannot use it for the other locations but we have to see some similarities uh, based on the tectonic setting and all uh, or sector tectonic characteristics and then uh, after verifying and confirmation we can use for uh, this uh, this one otherwise we have to use artificial generating ground motion for knowing the faults characteristics and source of site distance so that also use for this uh, uh, where the ground motion data is not available and so you want to do this study for this area so you can you have to go for simulation ground motion simulation or artificial ground motion generation uh, for this study so now scope uh, in this study what are the again like our steps is the various data for geotechnical properties geology topology uh, sorry topography seismicity seismotectonics of the study area that you have to know uh, for your ground response studies developing new correlation for estimating shear velocity for spt and, and value and value classifying the site according to the nhrb provision for site classification evaluation of shear velocity uh, profiles with that uh then selecting ground motion reduction curve and damping ratio already that we have discussed uh, and select input ground motion also you have to do and and the analysis should be done through era say, set 2000 or deep soil and then uh, the natural period amplification and response spectrum pga that you have to obtain this these are the output and then design response spectra for uh, according to your study that you have to do it and compare to the is code that these are the complete steps so methodology like what are the methodology using site specific ground response analysis this is a one like a, a one dimensional ground response analysis is being used so it can be linear linear analysis equivalent linear analysis and non linear analysis so you know, based on the soil property so you we have to uh, use it uh, and the, 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 there are uh, and these are also already available in the in the, those particular software uh, or tools so that is say 2000 deep soil is a non linear uh, like a non linear analysis and equivalent linear is a set to 2000 era so these any anyone uh, these are following this uh, like propagation uh, equation or the characteristics or mathematical modeling to capture uh, to assess or simulate the uh, like a uh, in, in ground response study to find out the amplification uh, site period Uh, as a and that is spectral acceleration pg and all and uh, response spectrum so uh, you can directly use it so this, this any method based on our feasibility we can apply yeah sir please next yeah so now this is the basic equation that are actually used in any of the tools uh, actually this is a partial differential equation you can see over here there is a, a u is a strain actually uh, volume uh, like a strain which is actually Uh, 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 like which is a, which is varying with respect to t and uh, and and this is the uh, actually partial giving you the partial differential equation that uh, for like in 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 a particular depth uh, uh, like how this uh, uh, displacement or response is actually uh, uh, actually happening uh, in a particular in a particular mode so that equation is being used in wave propagation and this is a, just a solution of this equation Uh, like u is a function of z and t and these are actually uh, being used to uh, quantify in a particular z is means at a particular depth uh, with a time varying response uh, what is the u value of u that is actually uh, that is that it will give you in a in a linear wise multi linear so now these are the uh, like your uh, shear modulus uh, and damping ratio curve for a, say various types of soil uh, that is in shown over here typically okay so uh, and these are used for ground response studies uh, uh, for uh, so uh, for assessing the uh, like the what uh, to estimate the uh, like uh, how much amplification or the deamplification is taking place for a particular layer if such kind of soil is there so these are used in as a input for uh, input in the those tools uh, so if it is not there you can do the lab experiment and you can 
input it as a uh, like a in input characteristics and you can come out with the uh, output uh, reliable output as i said already now is the input ground motion uh, so where so there will be recorded motion in the study areas they are somewhere you may not have a, a ground motion recording in that particular site so in this case uh, you have to go for a, a ground motion simulation uh, okay so input motion you have to uh, generate by generating the uh, that is called synthetic earthquake motion or the artificial ground motion generation by knowing the fault characteristics and your uh, like um, like uh, what type of fault it is at a, where is, how much distance from source to site and uh, what what magnitude that earthquake is going to generate uh, based on your study you observe so if you give all this input so in that that tool will give you uh, actually uh, like a, 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 like ground motion and uh, that is called artificial ground motion and that ground motion is being used as an input for site response study uh, so this is the just like your uh, like uh, study which we have conducted and typically shown in as a map so this is just like as a typical uh, representation for how you have to select your fault when you go for a artificial ground motion generation and your seismicity like events events as well as faults you have to uh, identify and map it and find out which fault is generating high hazard and that fault you can consider uh, for your uh, generating a simulation uh, ground motion equation uh, sorry uh, uh, ground motion time history for your input motion so this is just like your formula uh, and layer wise how it is taking place this uh, like the various equation like uh, this is actually used for uh, like um, how uh, what are the parameters involved in this uh, artificial ground motion generation so your source path and site effects uh, all these kappa factor uh, so all these parameters are being radiation factor so all these parameters are involved in uh, artificial ground motion generation as at the rock layers as well as the ground surface through ground response studies as well as uh, like uh, so uh, you can use it so these are available uh, in 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 various uh, platforms you can obtain it sir please next so these are some of the uh, like typical generation of artificial ground motion for our study area we have shown over here and these are the inputs that are necessary for uh, generating the artificial ground motion generation so these are some of the typical uh, like uh, um, ground motion we have uh, estimated for our study area or the study locations uh, yeah so this is for typical and these are the borehole uh, subsurface layering boreholes and uh, whatever share and this uh, share of velocity that we have obtained we have uh, like verified uh, like for uh, various types of soils like all types of soil and sand and clay soils we have tried to map it along the depth like the subsurface from the surface uh, surface is zero from along the depth around 50 meter how this uh, sand clay is actually varying between these two uh, like uh, and this is the actual borehole data and these are the surface level mapping of the hazard uh, like for the city that we have conducted uh, and estimated at the ground surface how much uh, say amplification and deamplification and the pga uh, both we have shown this is the amplification and this is the pga mapping we have done for the study area and uh, this uh, this can be directly used for our curation design and this is for uh, suppose now uh, you want to construct say any type of structure so like ground as uh, ground as a design response spectrum is needed so you have to, uh, if you are able to do it for a for a particular city now this can be used for any type of structures because you know, we already we know that design response spectrum is a function of natural period so from that you can once you generate it so you can utilize it uh, uh, for this that is called surface level design response spectrum or site specific design response spectrum so from that uh, you can uh, utilize it for your design purpose uh, for any type of whether it is a ground story structures whether it is a mid rise structures or it is a tall structure so you can you, you, you get the expected force that is that is going to experience by the structure so the, and that can be used for design purpose sir please next yeah so now uh, these are I, I will not go through i think uh, for this uh, paper uh, these are already published form you can go through that is a, a comprehensive seismicity and all and uh, you can reach to me using the following link okay so i think uh yeah so any <laughs> yeah.
Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. So I think uh, now it's a good time uh, to take uh, some questions. Yes. yes. So with your permission, we'll carry on with the question answer session. Yes, sir, please. Okay. So I can read there are a few questions in front of me and uh, I'll uh, on behalf of the participants, I will be conversing with you. Sure, uh, so the first question is how to derive combined fragility curve? That is a question. Okay, how to combine the combined fragility curve? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, so what, you, what we have to do is actually for combined fragility curve, uh, you have to couple the various response, that is, these are called uh, actually um, like a, res a response parameters. Okay, uh, re response parameter. So these response parameter may be displacement, this may be acceleration, this may be velocity, whatever it is. So, uh, and you have to see the structure. Suppose you are uh, analyzing a structure that is actually say arcuation uh, design, and uh, and what are the vulnerable like uh, highly predominant response quantities like a that is called engineering demand parameter especially mm -hmm. uh, so that engineering demand parameter like uh, you have to see a uh, based on your structure like tall structure will be highly displacement sensitive so in this case uh, you have to consider the displacement as the major parameter and along, along with the rotation also you have to consider uh, joint rotation especially and like history sees uh, like energy losses also you can consider that is so like that there may be a number of parameters you can consider and you have to see statistically uh, following the significance uh, five percent significance what are the uh, parameters that are highly contributing and mm. from that you have to serve like that is called surface response function you can generate statistically and come out with the uh, combined fragile function and from that you can generate the combined hazard curve uh, for, for for various parameters and you can uh, vary based on their limited limiting ranges and you can see how which one is highly uh, showing the variations in in, in in terms of probability of accidents uh, which is giving you the fragility okay uh, so i think the questioner must have received your uh, explanation and answer uh, another question we have uh, for developing a reliability curve uh, we require fragility curve and seismic hazard curve so it's it's interrelated i think uh, how to develop seismic hazard curve and uh, consecutively uh, how to obtain the reliability curve reliability curve reliability okay so, yeah seismic hazard curve suppose uh, uh, i think reliability means i think uh, is uh, is it, uh, like not a reliability it is a, i think a uh, um, survival function i think he is talking about maybe okay yeah so uh, uh so in that case uh like what if to do survival function is completely different uh, let me explain this seismic hazard curve first seismic hazard curve already although i have pre presented over my presentation but seismic hazard curve gives you the like quantification of the seismic hazard at the ground surface so mm -hmm. through, through through your uh, uh, like identifying the faults in a particular uh, location uh, and then next is your quantification or mapping of through ground uh, that is called uh, attenuation equation or GMP uh, for your area of interest. And based on the PSHA, not DSHA, PSHA that is for probability seismic hazard study, you can obtain the seismic hazard curve for that particular area or that particular specific location in terms of latitude and longitude also you can talk about for a particular location. And that gives you the seismic hazard curve, which is giving you the uh, like mean annual rate of accidents, that is the frequency of occurrence versus your uh, considered parameter, it may be normally PGA, uh, which is exceeding. Uh, so that gives you the lambda, that is the frequency of uh, mean annual rate of accidents. So from that, we can obtain uh, the actually hazard curve. So details, uh, yeah. So now, uh, but uh, reliability hazard or reliability function, what uh, I think uh, the participants have asked, I think, it is a survival function. So survival function is completely different. Let me give some overview on it. Uh, like, be, like being a human being, suppose I'm starting from here, being a human being, we have some life, life, life cycle. Like we have a age, 
okay any 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 like our life, body is actually say first that is called hazard function or the bathop curve if you see mm-hmm. there is there is a called bathop curve so that curve actually gives you the complete history like there is a three phases one is called uh, like random failure beginning initial initial failure also you can talk about in between that is called random uh, in between called random failure initial failure random failure and then deterioration that starts after some particular uh, particular age which is exceeding say 40 or 40 years and uh, above for a particular structures so being a human being normally our uh, deterioration starts also like the 50 say 50 or 60 like that if we talk about mm-hmm. the whole life cycle so similarly structure is also going to be uh, going to be affected and in that case we want to see how much uh, survival survivability or survival function uh, that we have say a uh, structure is going to survive uh, say 95 percent or say 90 percent uh, during design life that means uh, it is a, it is it is, it is our, almost its reliability is 90 percent this point nine so in that case we go for that is called also, also called degradation function gt also if you, if you see standard term it is written so okay. from that deg- so these three phases we have to talk about in that the survival function will come and give you how much deterioration of the existing structure uh, has actually uh, taken place so that gives you the idea actually that uh, is a survival function okay Right, sir. So uh, the one last question we have: uh, yeah. fragility curves generally uh, represents the spectral acceleration versus drift. So how to find the spectral uh, acceleration for particular PGA? Okay. So yeah. So suppose uh, spectral acceleration PGA. Spectral acceleration. What is there is a basic difference between the PGA and spectral acceleration. We mm-hmm. cannot say oh, both are acceler- actually acceleration values, but there is a basic difference. Like PGA is actually considered as a zero period values, the zero period of the structure. That is a PGA and spectral acceleration beyond that. Again, if we talk about in this uh, specifically, like as per the codal uh, provisions, like you see that 0. 0.03 seconds, like within that, if any acceleration is taking place, you are considering, so that is coming under zero period. Because exactly zero period is giving you the infinite term. That is a, indirectly you could think, think logically that gives you the like a like a rigidity a rigidity of that particular structure is uh, rigidity means stiffness. Stiffness is actually infinite. So which is in real case real structure that it does not exist. So <coughs> in case of uh, so that's why 0. 0.03 second is being considered in case of IS code. But uh, beyond that, 0. 0.03 seconds above, so if you see that is called short period structure and long period uh, say, uh, structure. So like that, in this case, 0.2 second up to 0. 0.03 to 0. 0.2 second, that gives you the mid, uh, like a mid ranges, which is highly influential for the velocity. Uh, uh, velocity. And for say long period structure, it is highly sensitive for the displacement. So in that case, this is actually designed, you cannot take for long structure designing you cannot consider pg or even spectral so the because they, these are not predominant so in that case you have to go for uh, displacement based design so so in that case like spect now question is spectral pga uh, like that uh, and some yeah. other thing as well so in that case we know that some base like if you know the pg of that particular value you can easily convert it into velocity there is a omega square say sd or uh, say uh, that formula is already there for a circular motion already mm-hmm. or, or, or so th- from that we can easily multi- multiply that you will come out uh, or you can transform it in terms of displacement velocity or acceleration only one if you know wh- when you know the one value like pga if you know you can find out other things so the, using this uh, circular motion uh, understanding okay uh, right sir so i think uh... All the questions uh, we have answered, and uh, we expect uh, the fulfillment of the uh, candidates. Those who asked this question must have received their answers properly. And we ensure uh, all the participants, other uh, other participants, if you still have uh, any doubts, please forward them to us. Uh, we'll definitely forward to the expert, and uh, uh, according to the conveniency, best possible time, uh, we may receive the other doubts also as an answer to them. So, uh, sir, uh, with this, uh, we would like to uh, uh, extend our sense of gratitude to you uh, for sharing your valuable time uh, with us uh, through this FDP session. 
and on behalf of the atal academy uh, marwadi university uh, department of civil engineering uh, we are uh, expressing our uh, deep sense of uh, gratitude to you and uh, we are sure that uh, in future also whenever it's uh, it possible we'll definitely join hands together again uh, for uh, such kind of gestures sure yes sir thank you sir yeah yeah Thanks. thank you oh, yes i am very yeah I, like um, i am i am very much pleased that uh, you have uh, yeah given me this opportunity in your, in in this platform and and I, I i am able to communicate with you i think yes definitely uh, yeah similar kind of activities even any other uh, research activities also we can involve in future so yes sir so thank you very much uh, thank you all uh, all so thank you. so thank you all the participants uh, thank you expert and uh, we'll uh, again have a session as per the time so in afternoon so let's get ready for the same uh, as per our uh, regular schedule so thank you sir once again for joining us thank you sir thank you sir thank you